Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. Today I thought we would go back to basics and talk about water changes. I think it's something that a lot of us take for granted that everyone just knows. So tell me below how often you guys do water changes on your aquariums. In my fish room, I do a lot of water changes and that's because most of my aquariums are really heavily stocked in order for me to maintain, you know, appropriate numbers of fish to have for sale. So my application is a bit different than most of you at home, but the principle and the reasoning behind it remains the same. Water changes are absolutely vital for maintaining the stability and health of our aquariums. It helps to maintain the continued health and growth of our fish, encourage breeding behavior, and remove organics from the water column. Now there's a lot of different factors that come into play when you're trying to determine how much water to change. And good filtration goes a long way to help us in our efforts of maintaining our aquariums. They help filter out the particulate matter and improve water clarity and can extend the time in between water changes some, but they are not a replacement for removing water and replacing it with fresh water. Over time, you know, accumulated waste from the nitrogen cycle, uh, dissolved organics from the foods that we feed, accumulated fertilizers, if you fertilize your aquarium, those things all build up. And though there may be some evaporation in your aquarium, the only way to dilute them is to do a water change. You have to remember our aquariums are a closed system. It's very different than what fish encounter in the wild. And because of that, it's really, really important and our responsibility to provide the correct environment for our fish. And the most basic need that we supply is clean water. On average, I recommend a 20% weekly water change as part of your maintenance routine. You will also want to make sure that you're vacuuming the gravel at this time should you utilize it. Now, a lot of my aquariums are bare bottom, so I can simply exchange water, but I'll first stir up any detritus into the water column before doing so. Now, because my fish room is so busy, I thought I would demonstrate a little bit while we talk more about this. So let's get started. Now in this aquarium you can see that the water has a slight yellow cast and that's because of all this driftwood that I'm utilizing for the plecos in the aquarium. If you guys remember correctly, this is one of my high pan citrus breeding tanks that also houses some dwarf cichlids, both of which utilize those surfaces for spawning. Now I've allowed it to evaporate down a bit because I'm really trying to induce these fish into spawning. And one thing that you can do with your water change schedule is impact the reaction of the fish. So I've let it evaporate down some, and now I'm going to do a large volume water change to simulate sort of a rainy season. To do that, I just have your standard gravel vacuum. I'll start my siphon. and go through and vacuum my gravel. Now you can see that there's quite, this tank only has a thin layer of substrate, but there's still quite a bit of detritus that's being kicked up from that thin amount of substrate. And it's really important that you remove that. Now normally, for just maintenance on this aquarium, I would do about 20% a week because it's relatively lightly stocked housing only five high pan citrus, a small group of um, ancestrous catfish or bristle nose, and then my two pairs of Laodicara. But because I'm trying to trick them into thinking it's a time of abundance through a rainy season, I'm going to do a larger volume water change and then start feeding really heavily. And hopefully that'll do the trick to get them to spawn. Once I've siphoned the gravel, I'll run my siphon over the surface of the plants as well. I'm not sure if you can see or not, but there's a bit of trap detritus that has gotten stuck in the mosses in this aquarium, as well as on the surface of the wood. I try and remove as much of that as I possibly can in order to get the cleanest environment. 
Now while filtration goes a long way to help with water clarity, there's really no replacement for doing water changes and how well that can improve your water quality. This aquarium doesn't get any fertilization or any chemicals added to it as all, at all because I have a well, so I don't need to use water conditioning. So it's especially easy for me to simulate this rainy season. Now generally in the rainy season, there will be heavy, heavy rains, which makes the water very, very dilute and generally slightly cooler. So we'll also make this a slightly cooler water change. And as I mentioned, I'll bring the level to about 50%. If I was simply maintaining this aquarium, I would do this same style water change, but a lesser amount as part of my weekly maintenance routine. Now I'm fortunate that I have drain ports in my fish room, so I don't have to carry buckets, but a lot of folks do. And it's always important to remember to dose your water conditioner before refilling your aquarium. If you're refilling with buckets or pitchers for smaller aquariums, you'll want to dose the water before you add it to your aquarium. If you're using an automatic water changer, you'll dose for the total volume of the aquarium before you start your refill or right as you start your refill. All in all, it doesn't take that much time to maintain your aquarium properly, but it makes a massive difference in the health of our fish. Now, as tempting as it is to just top off aquariums when they get a little bit low, it's exceptionally important to make sure that you are actually removing the accumulated organics during your water change. I also think it's of key importance to make sure you do a good gravel vacuum, especially in an aquarium with a thick gravel or sand bed. Now I've shown you guys before in my little heavily planted tanks how I utilize chopsticks and small siphons in order to get around the dense carpet plants. I'll put a link to that here for you as well. So that's about 50%. Now I've set my temperature to be slightly cooler than the aquarium now, and I'll simply refill. Just a reminder, if you have city water or water with chlorine or chloramines in, this is when you would want to dose your water conditioner. Again, I have a well, so there's no chemicals in my water at all. I can simply just set it and let it fill. While this is filling, I'm going to move on to one of my planet aquariums and talk to you a little bit more about that. Now this little tiny aquarium doesn't require nearly as much maintenance as a lot of my other aquariums and that's because it's stocked very differently. While it does have a thick substrate, it only has a small colony of shrimp in it, meaning the bio load and the waste produced are way lower. This aquarium I give 20% water changes every other week. So there's a lot of variables to take into consideration when you're trying to figure out how much and how often to water change your aquarium. With small aquariums like this that utilize a substrate that pull out hardness, I prefer smaller volume water changes. If this was a densely populated shrimp aquarium, I would do very small volume, very frequent water changes in order to maintain the dilution. But again, it only has a very small colony of shrimp in it. Now while this 150 gallon aquarium is very lightly stocked, if you guys remember correctly, this fish, this tank has very few fish in it, at least for 150 gallon, and they're all relatively small, low bio load fish. That being said, this tank gets 50% weekly water changes simply because of the needs of the fish. It's important to understand what kind of fish we're working with and maintaining and their needs. All of these fish come from waters that are really dilute and fast moving. So it's especially important that I maintain that dilute level of water quality for these fish. And the easiest way to do that is water changes. So this one gets at least one 50% water change each week. Sometimes I'll even do two. And as you can tell by the colors of the fish, it really pays off. Now, if you guys remember correctly, this aquarium houses my colony of L236 plecos. They come from very warm, fast-moving waters in Brazil. It also has some of my rams, which I also like to have spawn a lot. The important consideration in this aquarium is that even though it's stocked very, very lightly, the bio load of the fish is very large. Plecos spend most of their time grazing, and that means they spend most of their time pooping. 
because of that, this aquarium gets several 50% water changes a week. In fact, I did one yesterday and there's already tons of accumulated detritus in the bottom of the aquarium, which I keep bare for maintenance purposes, and I need to do another water change. So let's get started. To water change this aquarium, I always use a simple siphon hose, which I start by using a squeeze, um, the squeeze thing that attaches to the siphon that starts my siphon for me. There is always a ton of detritus in this aquarium that requires constant maintenance. And it's important when doing our stocking to take into consideration what level of care we can provide for the fish we're interested in keeping. For instance, if you're not interested in doing a lot of cleanup and water changes, you probably shouldn't breed plecos because they really do require it. And if you guys remember when I was showing you guys how to set this up, I mentioned how important it was to leave space between the decor in order to remove all the waste that these guys produce because it is incredible the amount of detritus and debris that accumulates in a pleco specific tank. I find it easiest to do frequent water changes to clean up their messes than leaving it for just weekly. In fact, I tend to spot clean this aquarium anytime I see an accumulation of waste. Another thing that water changes do is they help bolster the immunity of the fish, helping to uh, prevent them from getting sick in the long run. So that's only maybe a 10% water change, but again, I did one of these yesterday and probably three days ago, and I'll do it every time I see that it needs it. So how do you know when a tank needs a water change? Well, it should really be part of your regular maintenance, whether that's weekly or bi-weekly. You should always do it, even if you don't think it necessarily needs it. Ways that I tell a fish tank needs a water change are the color of the water, the clarity of the water, and if I can see any accumulated um, debris, detritus, etc. It's important to remember as well in planted aquariums that this means if you have unhealthy plants or um, plants that are shedding leaves, all of those things factor into the overall health of the aquarium. And you need to keep up with your plant trimming and maintenance as to, in order to maintain proper aquarium health. And I think you can tell by the uh, beauty of the rams in here how much they appreciate this clean, clean water. So what can happen if you don't do water changes? Well, there's a few things. Oh, hold on, I gotta stop that tank from filling. So what happens if you don't do your water changes? Well, at first, you may not notice much. You can go months and your aquarium will be seemingly fine. But over time, all of those organics will build up and build up and build up and it'll create an acidic environment, which can reduce the buffering capacity of your water. And what does that mean to you and your fish? Well, it means that your pH can crash out, which means if you do do a water change, you're gonna get a huge shift in parameters which can be very dangerous to your fish. And you get something called old tank syndrome. Now it is reversible and if it's been a few months since you've done a water change, the best thing you can do is small, frequent water changes to gradually get your aquarium back to where it needs to be. Now there is not a hard and fast rule as to how much or how often. You really have to take in con into consideration what's in your tank, what are the needs of the things in your tank, including your plants and your fish, and what size your tank is. As I've mentioned in lots and lots of videos, smaller aquariums are inherently more difficult to maintain and require more work because they have such a little amount of dilution. For my really small aquariums that are stocked average or slightly densely, I really recommend at least one water change per week. In things like my little shrimp tank, which is a, I think it's an 11 gallon aquarium, it has literally like 10 shrimp. That one can go a bit longer. If you are fertilizing your plants, it's especially important to make sure you keep up on your water changes because those fertilizers will continue to accumulate over time, which can be detrimental to your fish and your plants. 
In fact, with some dosing methods like estimative index where you dose dry ferts to overdose the fertilizers to make them more available to the plants, that protocol recommends 50% weekly water changes and it's really important to keep up on that. For most of my applications with my slow growing, low tech, low maintenance plants, as long as my plants are healthy, I can just do average water changes of 25% or so per week. And again, in my densely stocked aquariums or aquariums where I'm trying to get fish to spawn, I'll often do much, much more. Or sometimes even stretch out the time in between in order to simulate that dry season versus wet season. I think on average, for the average aquarium, at least a 25% every other week is the bare minimum that you can get away with, with 25% per week being more ideal. And if you're fertilizing more. As always, thanks for your continued support. I hope you guys subscribe because I have some really exciting things planned for you in December, including for my international folks. Uh, make sure you stop by my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano.